Okay, Simon. Um, what to do for a brand new business just starting out, not much of a web presence, coming back uh, to being self-employed after working uh, in an unrelated field for seven years. So, well, Simon, welcome. Where are you coming from? Hi, yeah. I'm, I'm in Crete in Greece. Hmm. Europe. Yeah. Yes. And where are you from originally? Uh, New Zealand. Okay. Wow. What a world. Huh? What a yeah, world. yeah. Lived in the UK for a long time, different places. Okay. So. Well, okay. So for everybody and anyone else who might be in this situation, right? You're, you're starting a brand new business. You don't have an email list. People Google, you're not going to come up. What do you do? in the very beginning? What are the first moves that you can do? Well, Simon, can you tell us just briefly a little bit about what you do, what's your sense of your niche, et cetera? Yeah, so um, health and well-being coach with the angle of longevity. Okay. So I'm thinking 40 plus, maybe 35 plus, but I'm, I'm only in my mid 40s. So like, I don't think I can help 80 year olds. So yeah. like kind of 40 to 60, something around there. And online, um, People with money would be great. Um, <laughs> so. Okay, so there, there are a few things just from what, what I'm hearing. The very first thing is to dig into the niche. Mm, yep. Because if you're going to be working online, um, there's a lot of people doing that exact thing, right? If you go down to the mm -hmm. harbor, there are thousands and thousands of boats and then it becomes overwhelming. Right. So the thing that at least have in the back of your mind as you're going uh, actively to be working on is here's the question, the, the most useful question I can give everyone around niching is what's missing in the marketplace? Mm -hmm. Right? What's missing? Yeah. Now, what's missing could be um, the what. Like nobody's offering this thing. It mm. could be, it, if you think about who, what, where, when, why, and how, those six questions, you just sit down and you say, what's missing in the marketplace in terms of who is even being served? That's it around longevity generally. Yeah. And then you can say, who's miss like what's missing in terms of what's being offered? Because maybe everybody's offering a certain type of longevity work, but they're not doing this other thing. So maybe the what is missing. Nobody's offering this um kind of packaging or, or structure like it's all one-on-one -on -one coaching but nobody's doing the retreats or it's all the retreats but nobody's doing the integration work so what's missing there mm -hmm. um, where so it might be you could do local wow nobody's doing it here in crete oh my god i could be the that could be how i niche is local it could be when um probably less relevant here but uh sometimes you know it's like uh, nobody's serving food at 3 a.m to all the people coming out of the bar, I'm going to open a hot dog stand. And it's really just kind of where and when, that's your whole niche. The food doesn't even have to be good. Um, who, where, when, why? There might be a deeper reason uh, behind this. Simon Sinek has done beautiful work around this. His book, Start With right. Why, Find Your Why. Sometimes that can be the thing to differentiate. There are lots of longevity coaches, but the deeper cause for me is about this larger thing, even than longevity. And your people will resonate with that or not. And then, um, like, for example, it could be the reason I do this is this is all tied to men's work for me and men being more powerful because we need more powerful men in the world who are in a genuine, healthy, masculine place for longer. We can't have, you know, people, men just getting into decrepitude right when they're stepping into elderhood and they can't even give their gifts. So it's about that. You see, that's a whole framing of why I'm talking about longevity. Or it could be it's like, hey, longevity, it's... Um, we're here in a spiritual school where we're going to ascend to 5D eventually. And we got to, you know, really get the lessons and, you know, the health is, I don't know what's about, but you'll have your own reasons. That could be why. Mm -hmm. So who, what, where, when, why, and how. So it might also be like, look, some people are going to tell you that the way you get to longevity is this, and that's bullshit. It's actually that, mm -hmm. that right? Mm -hmm. So you start to, you can be known by the point of view, but something, if there's nothing missing in the marketplace, it's usually a, a problem. It doesn't mean that people have to be aware of it, but you have to at least see, man, that's a gap. Nobody is right. doing this for those people in this way. Um, as you clarify that, that'll make it easier. If you go to marketingforhippies.com slash puttering dash prep, or mm -hmm. what slash prep, what the hell is the word? You'd think I would. 
Uh, there's an niching exercise. There is. There's a uh, yeah, puttering yeah, approach. Yeah, so puttering P, page. P U T T E R I N G P R E P. And these, and this is, by the way, I will be selling this at some point. I will be uh, charging money for this because it's a, there's a lot, but it's free right now. Um, but do those exercises, start to dive in and think about it. And also if you go to marketingforhippies.com slash steps, um, I'll just do a screen share so everyone can see. There's also, a ton, I have so much free content on Nation. It's mad. Okay. So there's this puttering prep. You can check out. There's some, these are my core exercises around sort of figuring out your ideal client. But also if you go to the five fundamentals here, which is marketingforhippies.com slash steps, scroll down to number two. Yeah. Identify your niche. You'll see some talking bears. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah not, so you'll see all my stuff on niching, like uh, yeah. why it matter, some excerpts from my book, ideal client stuff, target markets, wound is niche, and then plus the products that you could get uh, on this on this topic. Um, the one, we don't have it listed here yet, but on my webinars page is, um, what is this? One of the webinars is around ideal client. And I would definitely, here, I would definitely recommend this one uh, yep. for when you're at in the beginning. Okay, that's all of that's around niching, but let me just give some other practical things when you're beginning. Um, the very first thing to do when you're starting is that you send out the friends and family email. You just email everybody you know. We get to do this once every three years and people don't get upset. But I mean, people you went to high school with, colleagues you used to work with, anyone you're friendly with, you send out a big blast saying, hey, everybody, I'm starting this new business. Kind of here's the best I understand it right now. If you know anyone for whom this might be a fit, could you please spread the word? That's just the easy low hanging fruit. Yeah. Um, second thing I would do uh, is start developing your signature talk. And uh, there's a video. Let me just pull this up here. Um, again, let me just do a little screen share so you can all see this. Bradley Morris, dear friend and colleague, he's got some fantastic work around uh, business model. Let's see. So Bradley Morris. Signature workshop. Okay. Um, mm. It's this one here. That's the one you want to get. Signature workshop. So it's him coaching me, but it's it's a uh, 50 minutes. And for all of you, if you're a service provider, I mean, check out his work uh, as well. Bradley Morris. It's uh, Anyways, the links are all here. Magicmedia.com. M-A-J-I-K media.com. But his work around signature workshops is so phenomenal. The idea is you develop, here's the very short course, a one hour presentation on longevity, let's say, in which you do four things, these four in this order. First of all, briefly tell your story. Here's who I am. Here's why I'm doing this, why I'm interested. Uh, this is kind of the cre credibility piece at a basic level. Number two, further in the credibility piece, here's my point of view. Here's my core take on longevity. Here's what I think uh, it's about. Here's how we do it at a 30,000 foot level. Number three, you give them some sort of aha insight breakthrough experience. Sometimes that's an activity you can do where they say, oh my God, wow. And sometimes that's a um, something you say, you know, you've got one of these little gems that you say and people say, oh my God, and I've never thought that makes so much sense. Uh, but something that's gonna blow their mind a little bit, that's gonna give them some, some real taste, some sense of what you do. And then number four, here's how you could work with me. So you can understand that the story and the little shameless plug at the end, that's the smallest part. It's like 5%, 5% at the most. 90% or more of it is those are is the point of view and the and the giving them some experience. But I would take that and do it everywhere you can. This is, I mean, anyone who will host you for five people in their living room, fantastic. For three people in a Zoom room, great. But you just do it over and over again. Because the main thing in the beginning is that you make that presentation better. Because in doing it, as you articulate it, it will become more articulated. Mm -hmm. you'll, you'll, you really will flesh out your thinking in a way that's very, very useful. 
Um, and as you also build your confidence in it, you'll build your clarity, you'll build your point of view because people will start to ask you very tough questions. You know, you have a Q&A part in it or after you're hanging out and somebody's like, yeah, this doesn't make any sense. You're like, oh, I didn't say that. Oh God, of course, that's obvious to me, but I didn't say, it. I'll leave that in. Mm -hmm. If you do that intro workshop a hundred times, you're ready then for a, a very large crowd. But just do small, a lot of little small ones as much as you can. Um, and the uh, and then the, the signature workshop, it ties into the hub marketing piece, which again, on the, the uh, five fundamentals page, there's some stuff. But who could host it? Who might want to bring me in to do a talk about longevity? Because your, your list is basically non-existent right now, so you're going to have to reach new people. So those are my thoughts. I don't know. I hope that's helpful. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Really cool. I appreciate all of your work and that you give away so much of it for free. It's just, and I'll be joining. When I make some money, I'll be joining your membership. Well, program. So. And the thing I want to say to everyone is, I got this from George Cow. Be generous with your content. Be stingy with your time. Yeah. It's, people get that wrong. They get stingy with their content and they give away their time. And that's the way you burn out. So, so if, be generous with your content. Why? Because when you give away your content, you're sharing your point of view. This is what has people trust you. Or not. Or just you think you're full of shit and then they go away. And that's fine. Um, but share your thoughts. Keep sharing your ideas. Um, okay.